Good evening everyone. Thanks for joining me for this club development presentation. My name is John Quinn and I'm GDA for the Mid-County area and prior to that was GDA for the urban area. What we're looking at this evening is a general overview of club development and the various aspects that can affect your club development and hopefully by the end of the presentation um, you will be able to reflect back on it and maybe identify areas that as a club you may be able to do a little bit better that will help you in your development. To begin with um, I've divided it into three different areas for the purpose of this presentation. We're going to look at the club, we're going to look at the school in your area and then the community. And within the club then what we do is we look at um, the personnel, how that affects your club, the image that your club portrays, the facilities available to you, uh, the tradition of the club and the structures and how all these areas uh, can affect your club and its development. We begin by looking at personnel and generally what we do when we talk about personnel in the club we look at how many coaches we have and how many players we have, what's available to us. But there's also the other aspect of, it, of the club and that is the actual committee members and the general people who help out in the club so you have your committee with your chairman the secretary the treasurer the pro the children's officer the liaison officer uh, the field developer the social aspects of the club the pr so fundraisers so you can see yourself there's an awful lot of people involved in actually running a club and sometimes we get I suppose a little bit overwhelmed by the fact that we don't have enough people to run the club and it's it's one of the first things that people uh, say to us and clubs say to us that we don't have enough coaches or we don't have enough players so as a club there's certain things we can do about that but then there's other areas we need to look and say well okay we kind of have what we have and how do we work with that how do we designate the right people in the right places to get the job done okay and part of that is the roles that we assign to people so when we're talking about assigning roles um from my own experience and after being i suppose a juvenile secretary for four years in my own club and then adult secretary we often go to an agm and there's a couple of positions filled and then we find ourselves that nobody wants a specific job it could be the juvenile secretary it could be the pr whatever it may be and what happens is somebody proposes somebody and then the, that person then feels embarrassed and uh, not to take the position and they end up doing a job and doing a role that they may not be suited for or may not have the interest in doing but don't want to leave the club down so that's an area that we need to actually examine the roles um, that people are designated or take on board in our club so for example let's have a look at our coaching and our coaching members are they actually involved with the right age groups so <clears throat> you could have a person who's really really good with under eights and nines and relates very well to them but that person is actually operating with we say under 16s and finds it hard to handle or we could have a person who's operating with the under eights and finds it hard to control them and would be way better off if he was actually involved with 14 or minors so it's important that we look at the roles that people within our club what roles they play and do they need some help do they need some support as i said i was juvenile secretary for four years in my own club and it's um i you know i can empathize with people who are doing that job it's a tough job there's a lot involved in it and you are the center of communication for all the juvenile club so it's it's a big role to take on and within the roles that people are operating in what's the qualifications you know are they qualified really for the job they're doing and this is not mean that you have to be an accountant to be the treasurer of the club you don't but certainly from the from the perspective of your coaching staff and um, have they got the foundation course done um, have they got an award one done? Do they attend workshops? Do they attend seminars? Does the coach 
in officer talk with the coaches so is there a communication network there so again all of this is just reflecting from the club's perspective and having a look and see is there areas that we need to actually do better and um, what do i mean by the interest are the people interested well generally you would say yes they would be interested they wouldn't be involved <clears throat> but you may have somebody who's in a position where they got involved because their child was involved and they will stay going and operating because the child is there and they feel well if the child is there i'm going to be here anyway i might i might as well do something but maybe their priority lies out on the golf course or something like that so again when we're designating people to roles or we're voting in people have a look at what's the best um suited person with the greatest interest you will have a coach and they'll actually be doing two or three teams and are very interested and energize the place because they, they really want to be involved but then you could have uh, two coaches assisting another coach and they mightn't have that great interest and all the responsibility falls then on that one person so again it's worth a while to stand back and have a look at that time available uh, in the modern world i think we can all acknowledge that people uh, everything is, is seems to be crushed into so very little time and what is the time available to people um so again if we're looking at different mentors with a, a group of uh, players is the time available to these mentors maybe one of the mentors is a, a farmer and basically the job that has to be done on the farm has to be done when it needs to be done and he's not always available to be there for or she is not always available to be there for training or for matches etc so it's important that we don't have two or three coaches with one group of players that can be caught in that situation you may have other um, lads involved or girls who basically have a nine to five job and they know that like from five o'clock on bar something coming up they're available and that's important from that perspective again going back to the, the chairman or the secretary have they actually the time available to them to do the job properly if they don't what kind of support network have we in the club that can help these and assist them in making sure that the job is done properly and then we have the parents and i think the more parents we can get involved in the club the better and um, does work for everybody uh, i don't think there's any doubt about that even if they're not interested in coaching there's loads of other areas that parents can get involved in i suppose what's important here too though is to look at the parents that you know as much as we'd hate to think it happens it does happen that you have a parent and they're interested only in what their son or daughter is is getting out of the club and they want to run everything they want to crib with everything they want to have an argument because uh, their son or daughter is not getting the game plan they feel they should get or playing in the position or the coach is terrible so again it's, it's just to look at that how we can get our parents involved in a productive and you know positive manner so the, what is the image of the club so if you take uh, perceptions are they important i think they are and um, basically we always hear the saying don't judge a book by its cover but then a lot of people will actually pick a book by its cover so it's important that the club is portraying the positive image that it should be portraying and that the people who are perceiving from outside the club what is this club like that it's a positive image so for example um, if your nursery program is going on on a saturday morning and people are coming in you know what is the image they see is there three coaches standing up against uh, the fence having a chat while the kids are running mayhem all over the place two kids having a fight one child crying their eyes out because something happened to them and being ignored by the, the coaches these are everyday things that happen in camps or in clubs but from the perspective of the person walking in who might not be part of that club and is making up their mind whether they'd like to get involved or leave their child come here or whether they'll bring the child to a different sporting activity it is really important that the image you're portraying as a club is a good one so just as a, an exercise or an idea maybe to nominate two or three people 
to go on a Saturday morning who are not normally there and to stand back, have a look at what's going on. And I don't mean the technical aspects of the coaching and the, the leveling of coaching skills, but just in general, what is their perception of what's going on there on Saturday morning? And then sit down with the committee coaches and have a chat about it and see if there are areas that they can improve on. Um, the image, the playing kit. So when your fields, when your teams take the field, um, are they all wearing the uniform coat? So for example, um, if you are a player with Barry Gunner or uh, Nagel or Kappa Quinn, you would be wearing the black shorts. So are all the players wearing a black shorts or is there a guy out there with a red one or another guy with a white one shirt on? And what is the image does that portray? Are the jerseys, are they clean? You know? Are they, are they modern enough? And again, this is this says something to the supporters and the people that you're looking to help the club. Yes, we are we care about what it is, we care about our image, and we're going to do the best that we can to make sure that this image is portrayed. The same, <coughs> excuse me, when lads are coming training, are they wearing their club gear? Rather than having a big mixed bag of soccer jerseys, rugby jerseys, uh, basketball hoodies what have you that if young fellas and girls have club gear they should be encouraged to wear that gear all the time when they're coming to the training sessions okay and um, the supporters something that sometimes is it's outside of our control but it's very important if you have supporters going to matches that are constantly abusing referees giving out shouting at the players abusing the and, and giving out to the, the coaches that they're not picking the right team and placing the players properly again this is a negative um this is something that's very negative to the people watching and it's a negative image that's being portrayed now you won't always be able to control it but certainly if it's something that's happening in your club it needs to be looked at and it needs to be addressed and whether it's to get the children's officer or the adult chairman person involved that may be the case that may be the way you have to go but it certainly is important again as to what image the supporters are given <clears throat> and then the image in terms of information what information do we we lay out to people and um, some of the clubs have absolutely ex excellent facebook and twitter accounts but again it's only if you're following these accounts that you get the information so one thing i would suggest is maybe um at the start of the year every child that comes along if the email address of one of the parents can be got and basically then a group is just set up so that every sunday or monday one person takes responsibility just to send out small little bullet points of the activities that's going to take place for the week coming so <clears throat> it might be the under eights are playing a blitz saturday morning 11 o'clock in kilmac or it might be the under 14s are playing a match a fail a match or the minors might be playing championship and it's just uh, the opposition, the venue, and the time and the date. And it just gives the information to people so that no one can come back and say to you, oh, I'd love to have went to that match, but I didn't know anything about it because I don't really follow Twitter or Facebook. So again, that's just another area to, to have a look at and see can uh, something be made, some positive changes be made in relation to that. Uh, we talk about facilities some clubs are very lucky in terms of their facilities they might have two fields and a juvenile field the uh, Horland Alley uh, wall session or whatever and then some clubs might not be as fortunate they might just have just the field but they look after the field and it's well cared for and um, it's important that everyone in the club buys into it the field itself is not just about the groundsman and the groundsmen in fairness to them um, they do selfless work they make sure that they, the field is cut the, it's lined the, the nets are out the flags are out and that but it's important that does your club and does do your mentors after training sessions take a quick look around if there's any water bottles or papers or anything like that thrown around the field that they get the players to go pick them up bring them in put them in the bin the dressing room and it just creates a, a, an ethos and a well-being with the club that says yeah we are all part of this club and we all care about our fields and our facilities 
And the same applies to the dressing rooms. You know, when they leave training, when they, they go out after the match, whatever, that the dressing rooms are left in good condition. That the next group coming in are not walking into a dressing room with there's mud all over it and boots have been cleaned there and bottles, uh, banana skins, whatever, are thrown on the floors. It's again just to make sure that if these are right, people see that they're right. And it does create a very good and a positive image. And that helps towards the development in your club. Same with the halls and the alleys. I would say that the main thing here is to make your, your playing membership aware that they're there for their use. And that if there's not training on on in the, in the alley, encourage the, the players to go up and practice them skills themselves. It's a fantastic facility. And it shouldn't be lying idle uh, just because there's not one of the groups actually training in there. The equipment for equipment what do we when i mean equipment we generally you know think about maybe um kind of stuff like or oh, hurdles and ladders and tackle bags etc to me the most important part of the equipment is enough adequate slitters and footballs so when your children are starting a training session they should have a slitter each for maybe five minutes before you set up whatever activities and drills or, or game based um, stuff you're going to do and just leave them be comfortable with the ball for five minutes with the footballs obviously you want to have one for each child but maybe one between two or three and just give them that five minutes to go around just kicking the ball and just playing with it just no restrictions on them only restrictions is that when the whistle blows for training to start that all the slitters and all the footballs come back into the bag okay and again as a coach you know if you feel that you're you're not being supplied with enough talk to the club obviously they're expensive so the two ways so it's three tails that you make sure that what you're getting you're looking after and it's going back um, to the club and it's not being lost all the time and then if you do have a clubhouse not too many clubs have them, but if you do have one you know to make sure that again it's it's well looked after and that it's made available to the families of the members so if they needed a meeting for a different purpose that the clubhouse would be available to them and again you're just generating goodwill tradition so how does tradition affect your club well obviously if the club if the club has a, a long history and a good tradition that actually does lead to um you know people wanting to be part of it Again, if it's successful, and successful doesn't have to be based on the amount of senior titles that were won, it's that the club is consistently performing. It's consistently, it's it's all the time. It makes sure it feels its fixtures. It's um, developing players, and that basically there's lots of players coming through to play the adult game. That you're not losing 70 and 80 percent of the young players from the time they started until the time that they reach adult. There'll obviously be some losses in every club. It's a successful club if you can keep a good percentage of players right through from their early playing days up into their adult. Is your club a disciplined club? Um, do referees enjoy refereeing games that your club is involved in? Or is it a case that other clubs and referees are thinking, oh, here we go again. There'll probably be a couple of red cards and they'll be indisciplined and that. And for the development of your club, it's really important, not only from the point of view of winning, indisciplined um, teams, they give away scores, they give away frees, which costs them matches, but it's the whole discipline on the field and outside of the field. So it's a case of standing back and thinking, do we have a discipline problem in our clubs in certain areas? And if we do, let's, let's address these. Let's get them fixed so that when we travel, or when clubs come to us that yes it's competitive we all want the competitive because that's the nature of it but it's done in, a, in an enjoyable manner that people don't feel threatened by it are we a caring club i think one of the things that was highlighted over the last um, three four weeks with the covid 19 is that the ga were very very to the forefront in being go progressive and caring for the people of the communities uh, getting stuff delivered, helping out wherever they could to people in need. And again, it's just looking at your club and thinking, well, are we part and parcel of that? Um, are we a progressive club? Do we look at our 
approach structures and think we can do this better are we constantly looking at upgrading our facilities <clears throat> do we look at developing people not just players but developing people how do we develop our young children are we looking at our fundamental movement skills developing athletes not putting too much pressure on them to win um, and all them aspects and again it's every club you know we view themselves as progressive but it's a kind of case that we can all learn from each other and from other clubs and like to sit back and have a look again at your club and think yes you know do we encourage our coaches to go on workshops you know do we kind of say to them listen that's you know there's workshops coming up here's the benefit of it and this is the amount of time that's involved in it you know are you available if you are we look after registering you etc etc and then i suppose the other end of it is the closed shop <clears throat> are we a club that's looked on and perceived as a closed shop so somebody from the outside do they feel i wouldn't be really comfortable going in there because you're looked at and you're thinking sure what he would they know about it they were never part of the club or they were never part of the ga and they're johnny come lately and if that is the kind of um portrayal that your club is giving out well that's an area that really does need to be addressed because if a club is totally dependent on just having people who played with the club as people who are going to run this club into the future they could end up in, in trouble down the line so again it's just something to reflect on sit back have a look at it and see is, is there any of these areas that we can actually work on and that can benefit us what are the structures within our club have we committees in place to look after how often do we meet you know <clears throat> do we meet every month to just discuss things it doesn't have to be a talking shop it can be five minutes ten minutes just to make sure that what committees and what people on committees are supposed to be doing that the job is being done do we have coaching pathways for our players <clears throat> Are we looking at our players and saying yes as a player when they come into our system by the time they reach the end of it it has been structured and it's to the best of our ability to develop them players and to give them the opportunity to go to the highest level they can they can reach and if we don't have a coaching pathway in place how do we go about getting and that's where like the gdas come in and there is other external help out there or there's people in the club who would be very good at sitting down and actually drawing up coaching pathways so again are we a club that have that structure in place are we going to develop our players to the best of our ability are we going to develop our coaches and are we going to de develop our officers so that everyone in the club is pulling together and doing the best job that they can possibly do and coach education is part of that whether it's for the coaches in terms of um, the foundation and the award won or whether it's uh, it's um, a forum for chair people or secretaries or the children's officer or the liaison officer or even the PR you know um, allow this person to develop by going on courses that shows them how to use the different modem and the different model because one thing you can see is that basically it evolves the whole time modern technology is evolving the whole time and the old job at the pro which was to basically put a bit in the paper on a sunday there's an awful lot more involved so again it's just to stand back have a look at it and think yes there's an area we could work on to help develop our club okay so we're going to look then away from this club for a minute and we're just going to look at the school but again it's all tied in so if we were to look at the school in our area um, are we maximizing the benefit of that school because that's where your main catchment area of kids is going to be and then outside of the children is there a personnel in the school is there the principal or some of the teachers in the school actively involved in our club or would like to be actively involved and even if they're not would they help the club in promoting Gaelic games in the school environment it's not their job to do that 
we, I've often heard it saying, oh, the teacher doesn't really give a damn about Gaelic games. <clears throat> it's not the teacher's job to promote hurling. If they can and they're interested, that is fantastic. But again, it's not their job. So have we the personnel in the club that are going into the school to promote it? You know, the people going into the club don't have to be brilliant coaches. But what they need to do is they need to be people who can actually let the kids enjoy themselves and then get a transference from the school down to the club where coaching will take place. Because with the best will in the world, um, a coach going into the club or into the school, sorry, and getting out 24 or 30 kids and they're on their own. The, the level of coaching and the standard of coaching that they're going to be able to impart is going to be minimal. So it's a kind of case of making sure that the kids are enjoying it and getting them down to the club for, for the coach. The other area too in schools is that, you know, when they enter coming to Monster Cup competitions, um, they might struggle at times, you know. To, generally, they'll only be allowed one teacher come out of the school. So they can do with um, the help of the club or some parents just to give them a hand to transport kids or give a hand on the actual day and that. Um, the facilities. So basically, I suppose what we're looking at here is the facilities. Are the facilities of the club available to the school? And if possible, you know, maybe the club, um, if they were in any way feeling a bit affluent, could throw a couple of helmets, a couple of hurlies, a couple of footballs into the school, which generates a good um, relationship with the school. The school may have a good tradition in Gaelic games, and if it is, uh, if it has, it's easier to continue that tradition. But sometimes, you know, the tradition was lost when the Christian brothers or whatever left the school, and it's up to the club maybe to build with the school that tradition back into the school and give whatever assistance they can. At the end of the day, the, the majority, the vast majority of the kids coming to your club are going to be from the local school. So it's important that there is a good connect still there and that information can be really re relayed there and that teachers can give a hand with it. Um, what's the interest, you know, in terms of the school to the club? That will vary. You know, um, some some clubs have a really good relationship with the school and vice versa. Other clubs, maybe not so much. So it's how, as a club, if you don't have that relationship with the school, how do, how can we develop that relationship? How can we get on a good footing with it? Because ultimately, it will benefit the club enormously if there's a good relationship between the school and the club. And then the community. We spoke earlier about perception. And this is really important in the community as well. Is the GA seen as part of the community? I know in some of the areas, some of the, the smaller clubs, if you like, or some of the smaller areas, it's an integral part of the community. But that may, may not necessarily be the case with every club. And um, so it's again, how do we develop a community club relationship? So, for instance, you know, if the community had a tidy towns committee, is it a case that the club can help volunteer people to go out and do a little bit of litter picking or something like that and generate goodwill in the community. Um, clubs are very dependent on fundraising and sending the, the lotto tickets and maybe getting a bit of sponsorship for local businesses. So how do you know how do we pay back the community for that? How does the club does it mention it all the time in the notes? Does it actually at its AGM tank the people individually, the community individually? Um, it might be the small shop, it might be a local butchers, or it might be a, a hairdressers or something like that. So it's very important that the community are seen that the club, you know, um, helps them out where they can as well. <clears throat> Any facilities that need to be shared. Uh, a great example of that is in the Rackormack area where there's a, a, an absolutely fantastic um, AstroTurf have to be developed there by the community, it's shared by the school, it's shared by the club and basically everybody uses it and it's, it's an absolutely fantastic uh, amenity and facility for everyone and it's, it's a great way that um, the club and the community have come together and operate in a shared facility. Is there involvement from the community in the club? So the person may, might not be a kind of case that they're sitting on the executive, but that they can go and talk to the club if they feel 
you know it could be something like parking on a match day you know <coughs> does it affect the community and if so you know what can the club do to try and ease that and to make sure that there's no one um, put out by it or inconvenienced because of that so again it's just working with the community and generating goodwill the ga are big at the moment on the it's where we all belong and that's fantastic if everyone can think that way and we can all work together and drive the ga on together so again as a club are we doing our bit in the community you know are we extending our um, an invitation to everybody and a, a genuine and realistic invitation not just ah oh, yeah sure you'd be welcome and then god i hope you don't come up you're not so it's a case of making sure that belonging is belonging to everybody and then it goes without saying that if there's a high level of respect in the community for the club high level of respect from the club to the community then that will help the development of the club um, that's the end of the presentation it takes about roughly 30 minutes I hope that in some way you've garnered something from it that can be beneficial maybe you have picked one or two focal areas that can be worked on in the next couple of months and try and progress an area that um, may need some attention you know um, and as I said we're all in together in terms of club development and hopefully um, it was a worthwhile exercise. So, good meal, all good, good there. Office,